for this uh, webinar series to our uh, young uh, engineering aspirants. So uh, actually, uh, mathematics, uh, everybody will, uh, it is not that everybody will love mathematics. Many of you uh, will have a hatred towards mathematics, but I, uh, I idea, I'm really happy that so many people are interested in, to join this course. So I wish I will fulfill all your expectations. Okay, so let us start the session. So today we shall see the differential calculus. So this is the most uh, likely to omit portion in your plus one and plus two. But uh, after this session, I hope everybody will start loving the differential calculus. And you will go and take this, uh, take your plus one book so to, to, to solve all the problems which you have not done. Now, so let us see the outline. So outline of uh, this two days course. So today we will see how it has all uh, started. That is history, history of calculus and types of calculus. Then we shall see some applications. That is the outline of applications in engineering. And then uh, some prerequisites we need for uh, to study differential calculus. That is functions and limits. And then we will introduce derivative and then conclude today's session. And tomorrow, we shall again recap whatever we have learned, a short recap we have done first, and then we will go move on to development of differential calculus. Uh, and uh, then we will learn some rules with examples. And finally, we will conclude with formulae and practice problems. Okay. So now, so we know that, um, so what is calculus? Actually, Calculus is really a fun thing because so when you have a constant condition, there is, it is really boring. So when you have the conditions changing, it becomes really interesting. Now, arithmetic is about manipulating numbers. That is, we learn addition, multiplication, etc. And algebra finds patterns between numbers. That is, we know that a squared plus b squared equal to c squared describes the sides of a right triangle. So algebra finds entire sets of numbers. Then calculus finds patterns between equations. So that is, we can find relation between the circumference of the circle and the area of the circle. So using calculus, we can ask all sorts of questions like, how does an equation grow and shrink? And how does an equation accumulate over time? And when does it reach its highest and lowest point? How do we use variables that, that are constantly changing, like heat, motion, populations, etc., and much more? So algebra and calculus are a problem-solving duo. Calculus finds new e equations. Algebra solves them. Like, evol like evolution, calculus expands your understanding of how nature works. Now, what is calculus? Calculus comes from Latin meaning uh, small stone. That is, when we have some complex things, we, it will be easy for us to understand when you look into small pieces. Who invented calculus? So I hope you remember these uh, who are in this picture. On, uh, on my, uh, that is, this is uh, Leibniz, uh, Leibniz and this is Newton. Of course, Newton's also struggled with calculus when he invented it. So both, uh, both were living in the same century. That is, Isaac Newton and Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz are the founders of calculus. So they invented independently at the same time in the 17th century. So the invention of calculus stimulated an immense uh, development in many fields. And then actually these both gave some path for differential calculus, but it was Cauchy who has contributed many things to mathematics. He's a famous mathematician, and he only gave the definition and 
all the systematic study of calculus what now we are we are using so now what is the story of calculus actually newton tried to describe the speed of a falling object when he did this he found that the speed of a falling object increases every second and gravity does not just make apples alone fall from trees but it also holds us on the ground newton showed that gravity even makes the moon circle around earth and earth around the sun so what is a rate so a rate is a measurement of how how much something changes so calculus helped important discoveries in engineering field such as material science acoustics flight etc so now we shall see some applications of calculus so in navigation actually initially it initially developed for better navigation systems and it, uh, it also used for building skyscrapers bridges and controls the movements of robots to command and in electronic electrical circuit design and analysis it is used to improve safety of vehicles and it, uh, to determine exact length of power cable between two substations and in medi in medicine also it has got its own importance that is to determine blood flow in a vein and to determine the growth of the tumor and uh, the output of the cardiac flow now let us see one by one uh, that is uh, first in navigation actually uh, those days in newton's days shipwrecks occurred regularly because the captain doesn't know where the ship is so there was an inertial navigation works independently in any space based transmitters so this uh, inertial navigation uses a combination of gyroscopes and accelerometers so after uh, newton's uh, developed the calculus uh, it does it it helped the navigation techniques to improve then in mechanical uh, in mechanical some applications are there calculus is applied into anything that is dynamical changing that is to solve the converging infinite series and sequence into a well defined limit now for example a mechanical rate of change is determined using differential calculus that is mechanically applied into how the differential gear in automotive application works and operate when the vehicle is turning now next is in ece so actually it, it uses to determine and control the robotic movements and mobile communication actually what we are doing now in your in your at, from your home your uh, we are communicating so it is with the help of 4g so that all there also calculus plays a very important role and application of electronic and electrical circuit design so the, this there also uh, without calculus you cannot uh, further develop and we know that the capacitors differentiate differentiate voltage with respect to time and express this time derivative of voltage as a current now next in computer science so of course in computer graphics computer vision and data mining and you may need calculus for discrete counting also and uh, in case of generating functions you will need to know how to integrate and differentiate certain formula and also it is useful for analysis of algorithms and similarly calculus can be useful in solving certain recurrence relations which are used in algorithmic analysis and in biomedical uh, there is an extensive application of uh, calculus that is statistics and calculus are the fundamental maths used in biomedical engineering in the field of instrumentation uh, on biological imaging you will encounter calculus in circuit analysis in biomechanics you will need calculus for strain or stress analysis and in uh, to determine rate of blood flow and blood pump how much amount blood pump into the heart per unit right and the growth rate of tumor cells cancer cells etc so wherever there is flow or growth 
we need differential calculus and integral integral calculus and uh, civil engineering without saying it goes because so it is used in construction of skyscrapers bridges etc uh, so to rate to calculate the rate of deformation caused by various functions of stress and strain any time there is a rate of change of something then the derivative is an efficient way to characterize it any time there is an area under some function describing behavior then the integral is an efficient way to quantify it so calculus has many applications in civil engineering so but it is mainly used to calculate forces area and volume okay so what are the types of calculus so as you know so there are two types differential calculus which cuts something into small pieces to find how it changes and integral calculus it joins integration means joins the small pieces together to find how much there so both are anti functions so the inverse of uh, derivative is integral Yeah, we'll see one video about applications. We learn about calculus in high school, and we know it includes integration and differentiation. But what is it actually used for, and how? The language of calculus appears everywhere in modern science and technology, whether we're modelling the rise and the fall of the stock market or determining exactly when a space rocket will arrive into Earth's orbit. It's the language invented for the specific purpose of describing the dynamic nature of our universe. To put it simply, calculus is the maths of motion and change. The word calculus originates from the Latin word meaning pebble. The Romans used pebbles to perform calculations on an abacus, and the word became associated generally with computation, just like the word calculator. The beauty of calculus is not just in the maths alone. It's in the way that calculus can form a connection, a relationship, and a language to describe the dynamic nature of our world. There are unlimited uses and benefits of calculus in any field. Calculus is the language of motion and change, and by using calculus, we have the ability to find the effects of changing conditions on a system like the weather, for example. In the atmosphere, we have changing temperature and changing pressure. So, by using differential equations, meteorologists can indicate and predict. To the weather for our benefit. Calculus holds incredible power over the physical world by modelling and controlling systems. It's the language of medical experts, scientists, engineers, statisticians, physicists and economists. If a quantity or a system is changing, we can use the mathematical modelling of calculus to analyse the system, find an optimal solution and predict the future. Motion, electricity, heat and light, harmonics and acoustics, astronomy, radioactive decay, reaction rates, birth and death rates, costs and revenue, all of these can be modelled beautifully using calculus. In calculus we have two different branches. The first branch is differential calculus and this involves the concept of the derivative of a function. This branch of calculus studies the behaviour and rate at which a quantity like distance, for example, changes over time. When we use the process of differentiation, we are essentially analysing the changing rate of a quantity and making predictions about its behaviour. So by finding the derivative, we can find the exact instantaneous rate of change at any point we like. If a function has a constant rate of change, we get a straight line, and it's easy enough to just find the rate of change using rise over run. However, when a function changes its rate a multitude of times, by using differentiation we can find exactly what its instantaneous rate of change is at any and every point in time. The second branch of calculus is integral calculus. Integration is the reverse process of differentiation, sometimes called anti-differentiation. With integration, we can describe the area of a 2D region with a curved boundary, or the volume of a 3D object with a curved boundary. We integrate by breaking the region apart into thin, unlimited vertical rectangles of equal width until the width of the rectangles virtually becomes zero, which is called a limit. This limiting process allows us to calculate areas and volumes with exact precision. If we differentiate a function and then integrate it, it will always take us back to where we started. Both these branches, different 
differentiation and integration are connected together by something called the fundamental theorem of calculus. This theorem, created by Newton and Leibniz, states that differentiation and integration are inverse operations or opposites, just like yin and yang, black and white, or matter and antimatter. Take the square root for instance, the opposite of taking the square root is squaring a number, just like differentiation is the opposite or inverse of integration. Now that we know what calculus is, wouldn't it be interesting to see how it can be used in aerospace to describe a rocket launch? If an object is in motion like a rocket, we can use calculus to model it. The thrust of a rocket into space is based on the calculus of motion, which physicists term momentum. In rocket physics, we are applying Newton's second and third law to a rocket that has a variable mass. How is the mass variable? The rocket's mass is decreasing over time as the fuel propellant is being burned off. As the rocket propellant ignites, the rocket experiences a very large acceleration as the exhaust exits out the back of the rocket at a very high velocity. This backwards acceleration exerts a push force on the rocket in the opposite direction, causing the rocket to accelerate upwards. The force acting on the rocket, called the thrust, is the rate of change of momentum, which is the first derivative of momentum. Using calculus, momentum, or the amount of motion of the rocket, P equals mass times velocity. And so the rate of change of momentum, P dash, equals dmv dt, the thrust of the rocket. We can also write this as a physics equation, F equals ma, Newton's second law. And rewriting this from a calculus standpoint, F equals m times by the first derivative of momentum, dv dt. To put it simply, the thrust of the rocket during a launch is the first derivative of momentum. Rocket propulsion also employs Newton's third law, conservation of momentum. This dictates that if material is ejected backwards, like the exhaust in a rocket launch, the forward momentum of the remaining rocket must increase because an isolated system can't change its net momentum. In other words, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction, Newton's third law. After launch, to achieve the desired final orbital velocity around the Earth, or to escape from Earth's gravity, the mass of the rocket must be as small as possible. And so the rocket sheds mass by using different rocket stages, separating its parts, such as the rocket boosters. Now that we've seen calculus applied in the physics world of aerospace, let's see the benefits of calculus in the world of economics. A lot of people dream about running their own business. Wouldn't it be great if you could work out exactly how to maximise your business profits and help build a thriving company? Well, calculus can be used to maximise profits and revenue for any business. In actual fact, calculus provides the language of microeconomics and the means by which economists can model and solve financial problems. Let's see how we can apply calculus to maximise your profits in your theoretical video game business, Pow Pow. Revenue function is given by Rx. Marginal revenue, R-X, is the first derivative of revenue. This is the increase in revenue generated when producing one additional video game. Change in revenue divided by change in quantity of video games. So what this tells us is exactly how many units you should sell to maximise your revenue so Pow Pow doesn't lose any money by producing too many units. This also takes into consideration the fixed cost of producing a big batch of video games. Let's say your business Pow Pow currently sells a new game, Legend of Horus, for $50. This makes the marginal revenue, change in Y over change in X, so $50 over 1, which is $50. Now you want to increase sales by lowering the cost of the video game to $30. The marginal revenue gained by producing the second video game is change in revenue, so $50 minus $30, divided by the change in the quantity of video games, 1, which equals $20. But this is less than the price that you wanted to charge for an additional video game. As you can see, we have a financial problem here, and we need to model the revenue here using calculus to find the optimal quantity of games to maximise your revenue. Let's say we model the revenue for Power Power and produce the revenue function as Rx equals 100x minus a half x squared, where R is the revenue and x are the number of video games sold. If we graph the revenue function, we get a concave down parabola. Marginal revenue is the first derivative of revenue. Differentiating the function, we get r dash of x equals 100 minus x. r dash of x is the gradient function of rx, so the change in rate of revenue, which is called marginal revenue. 
If we find the maximum revenue from the first derivative algebraically, we need to let the first derivative equal zero to find the maximum x point or maximum number of video games first. Letting r dash of x equals zero, we get 100 minus x equals zero and solving this x equals 100. Substituting x equals 100 back into the revenue equation to find the actual revenue for Pow Pow, your revenue is r of 100, which equals 100 times 100 minus a half times 100 squared, which equals $5,000. This means that the rate of production resulting in maximum revenue occurs when the number of video games sold is 100, resulting in a total revenue of $5,000. As you can see, we can easily maximise your business profits by using the first derivative of revenue, marginal revenue. It's also known that a company produces best results when production and sales continue on until marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So now that we've seen the benefits of calculus in aerospace and economics, let's now see its benefits in medicine. Let's say that you're a doctor, Dr. Cure, and you would like to observe the progression of a tumour in one of your patients, John. John has a small, early onset tumour, and you would like to see whether it's responding to a new innovative drug, a Rivadochi tumour, which has no side effects. As a doctor, you would like to model the growth of John's tumour using calculus to analyse the progression or reversion of his disease. The function you have created to model the progression of growth of John's tumour is an exponential function with respect to time. Vt equals V0 e to the power of At, where V is the volume of the tumour, V0 is the initial volume of the tumour, A is a constant and T is time. Differentiating this, the first derivative of the tumour volume will be the change in tumour volume over time, and in medicine this is called the specific growth rate, SGR, dv dt or V dash. The first derivative V dash gives you important information about whether John's tumour is growing or shrinking, and the rate at which it's doing so. V dash tells Dr. Cure the relative change in tumour volume per unit of time. Dr. Cure differentiates the function and produces V dash, so specific growth rate equals V0 times A times E to the power of AT, so V dash equals V0 AE to the power of AT. If the tumour has a high SGR or V dash, Dr. Cure can interpret this as a rapidly growing tumour, and then he can make decisions about the form of therapy or change in therapy to cure the tumour and get John back to good health again. If the SGR is low, then Dr. Cure can assume that the new innovative drug, a Rivadochi tumour, is working, the tumour is shrinking and just continues John on the current regime. As we've seen, the beauty and benefits of calculus can be applied in any scenario of change or motion, whether it be aerospace, economics, medicine and more. The benefits of calculus are endless, and if we have any problem in any dynamic situation that involves either change or motion, you can be sure that we can turn to calculus as a tool to model the problem and provide us with the answers. had a better understanding about the application. So now we'll go into the subject of differential calculus. So what are the types of calculus? So the types of calculus are, there are two types, that is differential calculus, which cuts something into small pieces to find how it changes. And integral calculus joins, that is integrates the small pieces together to find how much changes there. Now, what is, what is differential calculus in, implies? That is, when we cut things into small pieces, we, we will be able to find how they change. That is here in this graph. So this delta x is a very small change. That is infinitesimal change in x. And delta y also, there is an infinitesimal change in y. So delta x and delta y. So this, is, this curve is, is the function. That is y is equal to f of x. Now we are taking two points, a comma f of a and a plus h comma f of a plus h. So when we find the change here alone, f of a plus h minus f of a and divide by h, so there, then we can find this change within this point. So that becomes negative. Actually, you can see that the curve uh, drawns downwards. So which means there is a uh, negative change. It is a negative change. So now, uh, so to understand all about derivatives, so we need some important com uh, concepts, that is functions, limit of a function, continuous functions, and piecewise continuous functions. 
so let us try learning these concepts uh, very clearly so that uh, we will understand derivatives more now so what is a function so we know uh, so uh, you, from the school days you will be learn, you would have learned when you were introduced a uh, function so you know that a graph has been first of all it is uh, you will you would have plotted the points that is this is the x axis and this is the y axis and then 4 comma 5 11 comma 5 2 comma 9 so which means that so the first point is the first number is uh, relates to x that is uh, these are the coordinates which is ordinate and axis are so the x coordinate is called as ordinate and y coordinate is called as an axis are so 2 comma 9 now so what is a function a function from set a to set b that is set a is called as domain and set b is called as co domain now set a to set b denoted by f is from a to b that is it is the assignment of exactly one element of b to each element of a so this exactly one it is a very important point that is you can assign only one element exactly for all points of a and uh, to uh, or points or some points of b so here 2 is mapped on to 9 and 4 is mapped on to 5 and 11 also is mapped on to 5 so this can happen but exactly so for each element there is exactly only one element is uh, is mapped now uh, another for example says 2 is mapped on to 9 4 is mapped on to 5 11 is mapped on to 6 so here i uh, though i said that domain and co domain here uh, it is referred to as range so we will see what is this range and what is this co domain in the next see uh, this is this is a set so this is called domain and this is called co domain and the elements of the co domain are referred to as image image set so given f is from a to b and if f of a equal to b where a that is the elements of capital a are referred to as small a the elements of capital b are referred to as small b so then a is called the domain and b is called the co domain now we say that small b is the image of small a and small a is the pre image of small b so the set of all images of elements of a is the range of f now you can see this in this set one is mapped on to 3 and two is mapped on to 5 three is mapped on to 7 four is mapped on to 9 now though co domain consists of 10 elements but the range consists of only four elements that is the range set is 3 comma 5 comma 7 comma 9 so that is only the range which means that in this function the range is a subset of the co domain so will range be equal to the co domain yes of course it will be equal we will see later so now at present you understand that the range is the subset of the co domain now the graph of f is a set of ordered pairs that is set of all a comma b such that a belongs to capital a and f of a equal to b so this what do you mean by ordered pairs so ordered pairs means this first element should come from the first set and the second element should come from the second set that is called ordered pair now uh, let us see what are the types of functions so first uh, Uh, there are functions that is one to one on to and one to one and on to. So many of you would uh, uh, would have a doubt in this. What is one to one? Actually, it is really a complicated thing. Every time we will we will be confused. What uh, what do you mean by an on to and what is a function itself? Now, see there are six examples given. Okay. So before uh, understanding this definition, we shall look into this uh, this examples. see look at the first example now there are three elements in domain so you have to imagine that this is the domain set and this is the co domain set so a b c are all from domain and 1 2 3 4 are all from co domain now in this function we have a is mapped on to 3 and b is mapped on to 1 c is mapped on to 4 
in other words see for 1 b is the pre image for 3 a is the pre image and for 4 c is the pre image but what is the pre image of 2 there is no pre image because 2 is not an image of any element of the set that is the first set so here it is 1 to 1 because the 3 is the only image of a and 1 is the only image of b and 4 is the only image of c that means 4 is not an image of any of a and b a or b so which means that one element one pre image one image one pre image one image so this is called one to one and not on to why it is not on to because in the codomain there are elements left out without a pre image so that is why it is not on to now we take the next one see here a is image is 2 b is image is 1 whereas c and d both have got images of image image as 3 so here one is one has got a pre image two has got a pre image and three has got also pre images which means it is on to that is in the second set no element is left behind without an pre image okay so this that is why this function is on to but not one to one because why it is not one to one because two elements from the first set are mapped on to the same element that is why it is not one to one then one to one and on to function so this is a very uh, wonderful function actually this is uh, this function is mostly has got practical applications uh, see first of all see you can see that a is mapped on to 3 b is mapped on to 1 c is mapped on to 2 b is mapped on to 4 so uh for to put it in a nutshell uh, all the images have got only one and one image one uh, all the elements of uh, domain has got only one and one image and the all the elements of in the second set has got the pre images okay so the best example for this one to one and on to function is your name and register number consider uh, that is imagine that your names are in the first set and your register numbers are in the second set so you know that uh, each one uh, each of the student are assigned a unique register number which means your register number will not be assigned to anybody else so that is called one to one and no register number will be without names that is on to okay so in an examination hall everybody will have a register number and no two students will have the same register number so this is a best example of one to one and on to function now, now there are other functions too which is neither one to one nor on to but uh, still it can be a function that is a is mapped on to 3 and b is also mapped on to 3 so b is one uh, mapped on to 1 c is mapped on to 1 so this is neither one to one and nor on to because for does not have any pre image and see look at this this example so this is not a function at all why because see a has got two images that is not allowed that is why when we are defining the function we use the word exactly one image that is a is mapped on to exactly one one element in domain so all the domain elements should be mapped on to exactly one element in the codomain so that is why otherwise it is not a function so what will happen if a uh, if a student has got two register numbers so which register number he will be writing in the examination paper so that is not possible okay so it is not a function at all now uh, this is also now this is one quality uh, which uh, ceases to be a function and another quality is see all the codomain that is all the domain elements has to have uh, an image see here a is mapped to something b is mapped to something c is mapped to something but d does not have an image so even that quality also ceases to be a function so these two are not a function 
so now come to the uh, definition part so now i hope you can understand this f is from a to b is one to one if and only if for every x comma y in capital a see for every x comma y in capital a f of x is equal to f of y which means x should be equal to y that is no two elements will have uh, will uh, will have the same image so if the images are equal the pre images also should be equal so f is from a to b is called on to if and only if for every small b belongs to capital b there exists small a belongs to capital a such that f of a equal to b that is for every uh, element in codomain so this is uh, from codomain we are defining so from the second set we are defining this on to function and a function that is one to one and on to is said to be bijective that is this is the bijective function and uh, so only if uh, it is bijective you can uh, find the inverse of the function so f is called as invertible if f is bijective so you are uh, actually when after writing your public exam uh, you will be your register numbers will be assigned a dummy number so that the dummy number so it will be corrected evaluated by the teachers and uh, the marks will be allotted to only to the dummy numbers how it is going to the correct exact uh, uh, exact register number because the function is invertible so because the function is invertible uh, each dummy number uh, the marks from each dummy dummy number can go to the actual register numbers so that is why f is invertible only if it is bijective so that inverse function is defined as f inverse of b is equal to c set of all a such that f of a equal to b so where a is coming from capital a and small b coming from capital b then of course uh, uh, small information about composition of functions and two uh, two functions are given so g is from a to b and f is from b to c so f circle g will be from a to c so it is called composition of f and g and is defined as f o f circle g of a is f of g of a so first you find the image of uh, a under g and then you find the image of that element under f so this is called composition of uh, uh, functions so i hope everybody understood what is the concept of function isn't it so you can raise your hands if you have under, if you have understood or if you have any doubts you can put it in the chat box okay so now i think i can go to the next slide because this function is very very important so the better understanding will give you a clear understanding of derivative so the better understanding of function is needed for to understand derivative okay. so now the next concept is limits so what is a limit the uh so we have, uh, we know what is function that is f of x now x is a variable a small a is some number so don't consider it as coming from capital a or capital b nothing so it is x approaches small a okay of course x and a are in the same set so that you have to understand x approaches small a small a is some integer or some number some real number so limit extending to a which means x approaches a of f of x it is nothing but a finite quantity that is capital l and also uh, we must have limit extending to a minus f of x equal to limit extending to a plus f of x is equal to capital l. so this is like a motion actually see uh, what do you mean by a minus that is suppose if you have two now x is approaching 2 from the left x can approach 2 that is x up x can take value 0 0. Point something 0. Point some 0 0 0 something and then it can it can go on taking those values x is equal to 0. Point, uh, that is 0.009 and 0.9 and 1 and then 1.00 like that it go because the real numbers are text you are having infinite numbers before 2 so before 2 it can come x can come from the left of 2 or from the right of 2 so from the right of 2 means it can keep on decreasing that is x takes 4 and x takes 3.5 so what happens when x takes 3 so we are uh, 
uh, we are trying to find in both ways so only if both the limits are the same then you call it as continuous function that limit exists you call it as limit exists but here you can see that so when I, uh, x approaches see x uh, x is zero so f of x takes a value six so like that it's going down then x increases f of x decreases and at the point two it comes to somewhere two but when it increases that is when x increases y f of x also increases but see at the particular point two so when it comes from the left hand side it has got some other value and when it comes from the right hand side it has got some other value one point something okay so that is why in this uh, example you can see that if you put 2 2 is minus 2 square plus 6 uh, and then if you put 2 here 2 minus 1 1 so that is it is uh, 6 minus 4 is 2 and 1 so 2 and 1 that is there is a discontinuity okay that is the limit does not exist so but our definition says that this limit should be a finite quantity and this limit should be equal to both ways so x going approaching uh, from the left side of a and x approaching from the right side of a now look at this example so this example tells us that the limit exactly it is there that is f of x approaches to okay from the left hand side also it approaches to and from the right uh, left hand side it approaches to from the right hand side also it approaches to two. so this is called this is the concept of limits now laws of limits so what are the laws so these laws already you would have studied so now let us just to give a recap limit extending to c f of x equal to l and limit extending to c g of x equal to capital l so these two are the assumptions we are going to have and c and k are real numbers so what is the sum rule so you you add two functions and then take the limit so you can add those values l plus m that is limit x tending to c f of x plus g of x is equal to l plus m then limit x tending to c f of x minus g of x is equal to l minus m then limit x tending to c k times f of x k is a real number which is equal to it is nothing but when you multiply this limit into uh, k times then that is also equal then the product of two functions is nothing but the product of the two values and of course uh, when you uh, when you find uh, try to find the ratio of these two functions when x approaches c it is nothing but ratio of l by m provided m should not be equal to 0 why can anybody tell me why m should not be equal to 0 You can put it in the chat box. Why m should not be equal to zero? What happens if m is zero? Oh, good. Daksha ini. Anything divided by zero is infinity. Very good. I am happy. So now, next is power rule. So limit x tending to c f of x whole power n is nothing but the limit value power n. So but n should be a positive integer. Okay. Then x limit x tending to c nth root of f of x is nth root of l. That is l power one by n. N should be a positive quantity. So uh, so these are the laws of limits. Now, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, can you uh, just to say that uh, any rule applicable to all numerical functions is applicable to limits of functions as well? Yes, ma'am. All real numbers, ma'am. Hmm. All real numbers. Whatever rule is applicable for the limit functions as well? Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. So next, we shall see one example. Now look at this uh, function f of x is equal to one. So when x less than or equal to zero, and it takes two when x greater than zero. So now we have to uh, find out the limit. So when limit, see for uh, zero is the point of discontinuity, uh, point of crucial uh, point here, because see we are uh, the function gets split at the point zero. So if it is less than or equal to zero, it is one. If it is greater than zero, it is two. Actually. 
uh, this f of x, that is for all x, this f of x is defined. Because here it is less than or equal to 0, it is greater than 0. This means 0 is also included. Okay, so according to our definition, so the domain is a, a set of all real numbers. Okay, so the, now all the real numbers are being taken care of because whenever x is less than or equal to 0, that is whenever x is negative including 0, it takes a value 1. Whenever x is greater than 0, it takes a value 2. So x, uh, now, now look at this graph. See when x approaches from the left. Okay, so here, uh, what happens when x is less than or e x is equal to zero? So you have to see what happens for f of x when x equal to zero in both the functions. So then only we can see whether it is continuous or discontinuous. That is the limit exists or not. Okay, see now x equal to zero in this, uh, if you put, uh, if you find the f of x for x equal to zero, it says one. So what happens if x equal, of course, we cannot put 0 uh, in this uh, range. That is, f of x equal to 2 will not work out for x equal to 0. But still, we are approaching from the right of 0. Okay, so from the right of 2, if you approach, what happens? That is what we are seeing. So x, limit x tending to 0 minus f of x is equal to 1. Limit x tending to 0 plus f of x is equal to 2. So now you can see that these two values are not the same. So which means the uh, limit does not exist. Okay. So for this function, there is no limit at all. Now, so these are some practice problems. So you can copy down these questions. So I am try out today. So the answers will be given to you uh, through mail, will be sent to, through mail. Okay. So now, Another important concept is continuous functions. So continuous functions. So what the is problem a, at the end of the time will you be giving or uh, they have to copy it down now, ma'am? Okay. Okay. Let them copy down, ma'am. I will give some time. Mm. And uh, do they have to substitute the x value in the limit function, ma'am? Like yes, uh, ma if it is tending to 3, that uh, you just ah. give clarification on that to them, ma'am. Ah, yes. Three okay. one point you take and... Uh, okay, so limit x tending to 3, x plus 3 means substitute 3. Actually, uh, here, 3 plus 3 is 6. It is uh, very basic problems only I have given to you. Okay, so substitute x as 3, then you can find out. Here also, the second also, substitute x as 5. So then see... Uh, see, only thing uh, you can say whether the limit exists or not, it should not touch infinity. That is, infinity should not be the answer for you. So then you can say that limit exists. Otherwise, it does not exist. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Shall I proceed? Ma'am, shall I proceed? Ma yes, ma'am. You can carry ah, on. Yes. Okay. Another important concept is continuous functions. So what is, uh, so we have seen the limit. Now let us see what is continuous function. Now here, uh, from the graph itself, you can see that you can draw the graph without uh, uh, taking your hand away from the paper. But here, uh, so in the second example, so the you draw the graph, you see uh, from here you draw one curve and then you take the pencil away from the paper and then you go here and then draw this one. So this shows that there is a discontinuity. Okay. So what does mean? Uh, the mathematically, what does it say? A function is said to be continuous at a point in its domain, say x is equal to a, if and only if these conditions exist. That is limit x tending to a f of x and f of a exists. What do you mean by that? The limit x tending to a f of x should be a finite quantity. And when you substitute, see you have f of x as something, x squared plus 3 like that. So A will be some 2 or 3. Okay, so if A is 2, then you can say that you put X is equal to 2, like what we have done now. So it should also be a finite quantity. So first condition is limit extending to A, F of X should not be included. 
and when you substitute x is equal to a also should not be included next condition is these both should be equal that is limit extending to a f of x should be equal to f of a so this is called continuous functions now uh, next is piece wise continuous function so when do we call a continuous function to be piece wise continuous so a function is called piece wise on an interval if the interval can be broken into a finite number of sub intervals on which the function is continuous see now you take the example of your learning in the school so the learning happens from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock so it is a continuous process of course because from 9 to 3 you are not allowed to do any other job other than learning okay but you are not learning the same concept every time so that 9 to 3 as we in uh divided into many intervals that is first period second period third period etc and lunch break of course okay so but in that one single period you call uh, you take first period so first period when the teacher enters enters so they are starting their subject that is uh, suppose if your uh, if your period is mathematics then the math subject will be started and from 9 to 9:40 continuously there will be learning there is no break so you are not allowed to go somewhere and uh, uh, can't do anything else so that is called continuous but after that math period ends you just there is some discontinuity before the next teacher enters and uh, you have to close the math uh, book and then you have to open the other subject books so there is some discontinuity so that is called as piece wise continuous function okay so if you consider your learning as a continuous function then your learning in the class per day is a piece wise continuous function is it clear so now graphically you can see what is this see there are some discontinuities uh, see here this y equal to f of x so this is the one and uh, from here there is uh, another line and uh, here it is going in the negative side so what are the points of discontinuities x1 x2 x3 like the point of discontinuities in your class is 9 940 and if it, if the period is uh, end ends at 10 30 940 the point of discontinuity 10 30 is the point of discontinuity and uh, and like that so every after every period there is a point of discontinuity so this is called piece wise continuous function now let us take one example for continuous function now See, look at this example. F of x is equal to x squared plus two x plus three continuous at the point x is equal to two. Whether it is continuous. So what we have to see. So just put x equal to two in this. So you get f of two. Okay. So limit extending to two x squared plus two x plus three is nothing but eleven. So that eleven is nothing but when you substitute two in this function, so you get x squared plus two or two squared plus two into two plus three. That is also same. so that is why f of x is continuous at x is equal to 2 so is now there is one question f of x is equal to mod x is continuous at x equal to 0 so this question will be discussed tomorrow so before that you work out and see whether mod x is continuous at x is equal to 0 so before going uh, to the next slide i just uh, want to explain what is mod x see uh, please uh, listen carefully mod x is nothing but x will be negative when it is less than 0 and x will be positive when it is greater than 0 so you have to split the function into two things x less than 0 and x greater than or equal to 0 so that equal to you can put wherever you want okay so now one more consider the factor of zero. steepness on the incline the steepness is the ratio of the change in elevation to the change in horizontal distance this ratio a number is called the slope for example suppose the elevation of an incline increases 15 meters every 100 meters the rider moves upward 15 horizontally 100 the slope is 0.15 a hill with a slope of 0.3 is twice as steep as one with a slope of 0.15 the bigger the slope 
the steeper the hill. When the slope is large, it's no small feat to get to the top. When the slope is next to nothing, near zero, it's easy going. And when the slope is negative, it's downhill all the way. At any given point. To determine the slope at a particular point, here for example, simply take another point on the hill. It doesn't matter where. Now connect the two points with a straight line. That line is called a chord, and its slope depends on the location of the second point. If the first and second points are reasonably close, the chord is a reasonably good approximation of the bike's path. Now, move the second point closer to the first. Move it even closer. The slope is a number, and as the points get closer together, the number gets closer to a certain value. It's reasonable to call that number the slope of the hill at that point. The line with that slope through the point is called the tangent line. And the tangent line is just what the chord turns into as the points get closer together. And the slope of the tangent line at that point is the slope of the hill. Before they actually reach zero, small numbers are marked by the Greek letter delta. Delta Y is a small change in Y. Delta X, a small change in X. So Delta Y over Delta X is merely a ratio of two small numbers. When the small numbers shrink to zero, that ratio becomes a derivative and the deltas become a new symbol, dy over dx, the symbol of the derivative, which means the derivative with respect to x of the quantity y. Once the simple mechanics are mastered, finding the derivative for just about anything is no harder than flipping a switch. The derivative of a function is the slope of its tangent at each point. The derivative of a function is itself a function. If the function is linear, the slope is constant, and the derivative is just that constant. If y equals sine x, then dy over dx equals cosine x. If y equals cosine x, then dy over dx equals minus sine x. Taking derivatives takes a little practice but it's well worth the effort. That's how the sum rule works. The derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. Another handy tool is the product rule. The derivative of the product y times z is y times the derivative of z plus z times the derivative of y. Using this rule, it's possible to find the derivative of x squared.
of x to the third power or of any power of x. And the value of differential calculus can be seen in the variety of its applications. For example, when a rocket moves with displacement s at time t, the derivative of the displacement is the velocity. Positive for upward motion and negative for downward motion. The derivative of the velocity is the acceleration, which is the same as taking the derivative of a derivative. That is, the second derivative of s. The acceleration is caused by the firing of the rocket. Okay, so you, you understood the overview of the derivative. So now we shall see what are the symbolic representations of uh, derivative. And see, whatever you have seen in the video, we will be discussing one by one. Everything actually uh, we have put it in the nutshell and we have shown the video, but uh, elaborately we are going to see uh, in the remaining uh, tomorrow. Now, what is a symbolic representation? That is, uh, see, they have actually Cauchy a finalized statistics or f dash of x or df of x by df. So the definition is nothing but dy by dx is equal to limit delta x tending to zero delta y by delta x. That is the small change in y divided by the small change in x. So dy by dx is the rate, rate of change of the uh, y with respect to x, rate of change of the numerator variable with respect to the denominator variable. So normally this velocity and the acceleration, that is rate of change of uh, uh, dis uh, distance with respect to time, and speed with respect to time, everything. So that is uh, representation. Now what is actually, uh, we shall see what is actually derivative. So the derivative is nothing but the instantaneous rate of change of function with respect to one of its variables. So this, uh, the, I think the point P of x comma y and here a comma b. So in the video we have seen this. So this, uh, this change, so when from this point it uh, goes to this point, what is the change happening? So this is equivalent to finding the slope of the tangent line to the function at a point. Uh, so we find the slope of the tangent line k graph at the point p. So at the point p, we find the tangent line, and then we can approximate the slope by drawing a line through the point p and another point nearby. So the slope of the line is determined using uh, the formula that is y is equal to mx plus c. That is the line. So the line means it is a, actually both the variable will have a power one, the highest degree. That is the highest power of both the variables will be one. So that represents that equation represents the line. So the it is called linear equation. So that is why it is called linear equation. Now, next, so the derivative of a function is the slope at a given point. So graphically you can view this. That is at the point you find what is delta x, that is the delta x and delta y. So it's a small change in x and small change in y. Uh, so for this, this is a slope formula you would have studied. dy by dx is equal to slope. That is y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1. It is given any two points. If you find the ratio of the difference between these two points, that is called as slope. Okay. So now let us see uh, the mathematical definition finally. Uh, so uh, here you can see the graph. So this graph represents, uh, you take, one point x and another point x plus delta x where delta x is a small change. So in the graph, it, uh, it uh, shows us a distant view, but actually it is very, very small. So delta x is nearing to zero. Actually, it is a, it is a next element to zero. Okay, so that is, a, that is a small infinitesimal change in x. So x, x plus delta x. Now, what the function, actually y equal to f of x is the curve. So this function, 
this is the f of x so what is the slope m m is defined as f of x plus delta x that is here f at this point minus f at this point divided by delta x so this is a mathematical definition so let y equal to f of x be a function defined on the interval a comma b so a comma b is one closed interval which means uh, so x interval a comma b and x is equal to uh, that is x we are assuming that x does not take the value a or b then f of x is said to be differentiable so it is it is said to be differentiable at at the point x if the limit exists at that particular point x delta x tending to zero f of x plus delta x minus f of x by delta x so at at the point x it is called as differentiable only when this limit exists so in the limit concept we see we saw that then the limit will exist only if it is a finite quantity and also when uh the limit approaches from the left hand side of the point and the right hand side of the point should be the same so there are uh, these conditions will lead you that whether that fun that uh, function is differentiable at that particular point alone so this value is denoted by f dash of x so there are notations f dash of x we can say or d by by dx all these uh, just for our convenience sake we are uh, denoting every time you you cannot write dy by dx it will be a mess in your paper so that is why a mathematicians always they will find uh, some simple notation so f dash of x that is introduced and is called the derivative of f of x okay so not only this when you go for higher derivative you have to write a squared y by dx squared d cube y by dx cube d power pi by pi by so like that so other rather than that if you put f power pi x so it means fifth derivative of x so that is why this notation is uh, mostly used by all authors so if f of x as a derivative at every point x in a comma b then f of x is said to be differentiable on the interval a comma b so this actually represents for one particular point del x now if this happens for all the points so here 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 every where or for all the points that limit should exist so then only you call that function f of x as a derivative as a derivative okay now next but uh, there are certain points to note a function is said to be differentiable at its domain if it is differentiable at every point in its domain that is the condition of differentiability holds at every point of its domain so that is why so each and every point not even one point it should fail to be differentiable so each and every point it has to be differentiable then only the whole function as a function it is called as differentiable function now a polynomial a constant sin cosine exponential are all differentiable functions so that's all for today so let's continue tomorrow now i can see whether you have any doubts thank you tamil selvi ma'am thank you ma'am uh, participants if you have any queries you can just uh, come out with your queries actually, you can unmute yourselves actually a query has come from hariharan yes, he wants you to repeat the session on 1 uh, 2 and on 2 function on two. Yes, so what i uh, feel is uh, what you can do is you can uh, give them uh, again the ppt can be taken and uh, you can give them some more examples so that they will have a better understanding of uh, on to and one to functions okay okay now we self ma uh, now we self uh, yes uh, then we uh, if some other people have query they can uh, uh, make it on chat box instead of all of them raising the query over uh, yes. mic it would be better if the query is written in chat box and uh, if somebody wants to uh, put the question uh, in uh, mic also they can uh, raise their hands and we can unmute them hello yes ah yes ah uh, yes so that is also possible so ah, then yes. they can uh, talk instead of all of them unmuting and talking at the same time ah yes ma'am yes ma one more uh, question has come have you uh, which one how to submit the assignments uh, is one more question uh, assignments ma'am that is uh, they can send to uh, either them, through mail if you mean. want to have a google uh, uh, classroom submission or uh, Uh, it would be better to send through ah, mail. Yes. We will uh, share our mail ID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I will share my mail ID in the chat box, ma'am. Mm, so yes, they can ma send it to me. Ma'am, I will give you the mail ID, ma'am. Ah, yes. Shall I? Ah, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So one to one and non to function. Uh, so again, explanation is needed, Mama. This for this one. Uh, yeah. So now uh, let me uh, recap again, and then I will give you some more examples. Uh, see, this is these. Uh, you have to understand that for a function. We need two sets. So those two sets, uh, we uh, we consider one set as a first set and other one as a second set. That is, it is one way. So f is if you want to give a mapping of uh, between two sets, well, it should be a one way. That is, from one set to another set. That only can be done for a function. So function or mapping, both are same. So why do we call it as a mapping? Because it, we call the second elements as image. So that is why we call it as a mapping. So f is from the first set to the second set. Now, the first set is called domain, and the second set is called codomain. So codomain elements are all called images, and domain elements are all called Three images. So now, uh, what is one to one and on to? So one to one means so one pre image is assigned to one image. This happens to all the elements of the domain. So if it happens to all the elements in the domain set, that is one pre image and only. One image. So, if this happens to all the elements a to three, that is from one to one, there is only uh, a will have that image. No other element of this domain set will have the same image. So, that is what we have to understand. So, uh, actually, this is not one to one because C C is mapped on to three, and D is mapped on to three. So both the elements from the domain has uh, they both are having the same element in the core domain as the image. So which means it is not one to one. So only if C has mapped onto three, D should not have three as an image. So this is called one to one. Uh, now onto means all the image, all the elements of the core uh, that is core domain or range. So range, uh, range or codomain. Uh, so range is a subset of codomain. So that means all the elements of the range should have the pre-images in the first set. Should have the pre-image in the first set. That is in the domain set. So here it is. It is actually onto. But here in the first example, it is not onto because this is the range set. This is the range set, set one, two, three, four, and this two does not have a have a pre image. So this is not on two at all. This is not on two, though it is a function. Okay. So now, if you take one example, f of x is equal to uh, x square. Suppose if that function, if you take, actually f of x. So x is from the domain set, and x squared. X squared is the is from the codomain. So now, if you put x is equal to two, you will be getting four. So for two, four is the image. Now, x if suppose x is equal to minus two, then in the codomain it will map on to again four. So which means two elements have got the same image. So that is not. One to one function. That is not one to one. Okay, so that is why one to one should have 
Uh, now, this f of x is equal to x squared can be one to one when only the domain set is uh, is uh, uh, constrained into only non-negative integers, that is zero to infinity. So when x belongs to the open interval zero comma infinity, then f of x is equal to x squared is one to one. Okay. So suppose if it is a whole real life that is minus infinity to plus infinity, then it is not one to one. So one to one and one to. Ma'am, can I elaborate with an uh, explanation? Ah, uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, example. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, actually, if you consider that there are three persons and they have got three mangoes, uh, if you assume that is the case, and uh, each one gets one mango, then that is a one-to-one -one function. Is that uh, clear, ma'am? Uh, is that uh, so? Uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, yes. So if there are three persons and there are four mangoes and three are given to them and one is left, then what happens is that is not an onto function because one mango is left free. That yeah. means what we have is in the domain we have the persons, in the co-domain we have the mangoes. The mangoes and uh, persons are equal, then that is an one-to-one -one function. And yeah. if uh, mangoes are there and there are uh, persons less, number of persons are less and three mangoes are being allotted, then that becomes a non-onto function. That is not an onto function. Onto means both are equal. Is that so, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma uh, then, uh, if you consider uh, there are four person and there are three mangoes and one person has to share a mango, then that is not an one-to-one -one function. That means yes, one person is allotted, uh, two persons are allotted the same mango. That is not an one-to-one -one function. Is that clear, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma and whenever a person is not at all getting a mango, it, it need not be a function at all. If you think that instead of sharing, you allot three mangoes to three person and one person is left free, as the case may be, then that cannot be a function at all because always a person has to be given a mango. Right? So that is, a, that is not at all a function. That being the same case, uh, if one person gets two mangoes also, that will not be a function. Is that clear? Hariharan, have you understood? Can you put it on the chat box, Hariharan and Sangeeta? Is that clear? Are you there, Hariharan, Sangeeta? Ah, it's clear, no? So always the mangoes and persons are equal, each gets one, then that is going to be one to one function. Uh, one person without a mango, one person getting two mangoes also will not be a function at all. And if one mango is left free, that is not an onto function. If both are equal, then we get a one to one and or onto a fu onto function. Right? Is that clear? Okay. Ma'am, uh, next yes, question. Ma uh, and I had my doubt. Uh, yeah, yes, uh, can you move on, move through these slides, ma'am? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, limits, ma'am. Ah, yes, next one. Next one. Uh, this one. Uh, uh, previous one. This one. No? So, this one. if the limit does not exist, ma'am, we cannot do the derivative at all. Yes, ma'am. That that, that comes tomorrow, ma'am. No. Yes, ma'am. Limit does not exist, then it is yes. not continuous function. So, then as we that is find the derivative. continuous function, we cannot yes. do derivative. Uh, so, if a limit does exist. Uh, then in next next question, ma'am. Ah uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, when uh, the limit, uh, if, when you apply the limit, if it becomes infinity or zero, zero, no, is, zero allowed. is allowed. Zero, zero is, is also allowed. acceptable. That I wanted. Zero to, is acceptable. Uh, yes, ma'am. Wanted yes. to make it clear to the audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zero so, is acceptable. Zero infinity is acceptable. Only, only infinity yeah, yeah. is only not infinity at all acceptable not. when you apply the limits. Yes, yes, yes ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma okay. Any other questions? Any more questions, Any audience? Questions? You can unmute yourself and ask. If somebody wants to pose their question in Tamil also, that is also okay. We can explain in Tamil. If somebody under, wants some understanding in Tamil, which can be explained better in Tamil.
Hello. Somebody yes, wants to post your question. Just uh, type your name on the. Or, or they can or raise the their hands, ma'am. They can uh, raise their hands. Raise their hands. Otherwise. Yeah, they can raise their hands. We will unmute it. Ma'am, K is on. Sudha Karan. He wants to know the function of prime number and odd number is one to one or on to. Prime number and odd number, ma'am. Odd number. Well, it is actually it is not one to one. It is it uh, that is we have to define yeah, the function. Is, uh, he has to make himself clear which yeah, is yeah yeah which is a function yeah but which is the function. So what is the function? Yes. Uh, yeah. Sudha Karan. Chidambaram is also having Chidambaram. a question. Uh, do you hear us? Like, uh, what we want to know is uh, what kind of question you have posted. Like, uh, do you want to know odd numbers or uh, one-to-one one functions, or uh, what is the function actually? Prime number and odd numbers are simple numbers. With that, if you want to create, ma'am, um, actually yes, domain. Yes. Uh, prime numbers okay. and okay. domain is odd numbers, ma'am. So if we map the uh, elements, means it is one to one or odd to. No, actually, uh, prime number and odd number. Yeah, function of prime numbers and odd numbers. So prime each number prime number, 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 number will be allotted a odd number, right? Each yeah, yes, ma'am. All will prime be... numbers are odd numbers only, no, ma'am. Yeah, all prime, not all, except two. Two is Except, not uh, even number. Right? Two is even number, right? But two is prime. Yeah, two is even. Two uh, is a prime number. Yes. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Ah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. That means it is. Of course, there are infinite number of odd numbers and there are infinite number of prime numbers. So uh, you okay. uh, you can make it as a one to one function. Each prime number can be mapped on to an odd number. Okay, ma'am. Ah. Uh, yeah, it can be one to one also. It can be one to one. Yeah, and all odd numbers will have a pre-image as prime number okay, because then, both are infinite in nature. Then uh, onto also possible, right, now, ma'am? Yeah, yeah, it is also possible. Oh, onto by... is not possible, no, ma'am. Why, ma'am? Uh, ma because uh, the number of prime numbers will always be less than uh, number of odd numbers, no? No, 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 ma'am. Ma'am, both are infinite in number. Ma both are infinity, ma'am. But if yes, you are putting a limit to that. Uh, no, we cannot put a limit because you can go on till infinity. You can find the prime but, number. Uh, what happens is some of the numbers will be lesser. Always prime numbers will be lesser than the odd numbers. Sir. Oh. So then some of the numbers yeah, yeah, yeah. are left out. In, are left out in odd numbers will odd be left numbers out. There are left out, so it cannot be, be an odd to. Yeah. But it each, can. But be it can be one to one. One to one. Yes. Okay. Each prime number can be mapped onto one odd number. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Clear. Ma. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Any more uh, questions, audience? From the recap of piecewise uh, continuous functions. Uh, yes, uh, yes, is asking. Yes, Subhu. Yeah, you can. Review of uh, piecewise uh, review. Uh, oh, uh, you, you want to review. want uh, recapture okay, on okay. this? Okay, I I thought uh, I'm waiting for a question. Uh, they are not asking question. We want to. Okay, okay. So piecewise continuous. Actually, piecewise continuous means see, it will not continuous in an interval throughout. Uh, uh, oh, okay. 
so uh, that is yeah uh, you can take again uh, actually i i'm thinking of about only this learning habit so learning thing so if you have a semester semester wise so semester is a, a continuous function uh, but in between semesters you have some break okay so uh, now if you if i am going to explain as mathematically so you take some interval a comma b so in a comma b f of x y equal to f of x if if it is it has to be continuous so uh, it can be continuous or it may not be continuous this continuous function also can be piece wise uh, continuous so for example if f of x is actually we have one example. example here uh, yeah in the limits see this one so f of x is equal to 1 that is there is a break the function itself breaks x is less than or equal to 0 till x less than or equal to 0 there is one and after x uh, greater than 0 there is another value it takes another value so which means there is a discontinuity here so uh, from in minus infinity to 0 it takes one but from 0 to infinity it takes two as a value so that means this is this is not actually a continuous function but if you split this this uh, interval that is minus infinity to plus infinity into two intervals minus infinity to 0 and 0 to infinity so if this is split into two intervals it is continuous so this there is a continuous uh, straight line from the left and there is a continuous straight line to the right also so this is called as piece wise continuous function okay ma'am the next question is from harikannan ah yes ma'am uh, it is about explain g of a equal to f ah, of yeah, a something you told about before that i have a question ma'am ah yes ma'am uh, ma'am if it is going to be a piece wise continuous function can we find out the derivative of that ah uh, Uh, yes ma'am actually uh, our four year series all exists in that either it has to be continuous or piece wise continuous so we can so find we out can. derivative we can of find so yeah. this can be that is simply for the entire function we cannot find but yeah but piece wise we can find we can find out the yeah. uh, derivative some mapping we can find yes we can find because the derivative also is a function so ah, we yes. can have some mapping mm. yes ma'am uh, yes ma'am what is that uh, question Uh, that is uh, he has asked uh, uh, g of a equal to f of g. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, so f of g of a. Now, if you see, we are we are seeing only one function. We are taking f of x from a to b. Then f of uh, suppose if you have another function. That is from b to c. so actually this function this both the function should have a common set so then only you can uh, find the composition of functions so g is from a to b and f is from this image set to one more set so here a is domain b is co domain but here the co domain becomes the domain and one more set becomes the co domain so if that is a case then you will you to f so if will be uh, will be defined as f of g of a that is first you find what is the image of uh, image of uh, small the elements in capital a under the function small g then those images will be in capital b so now only take those images and then at this function f on that b to c so for those images you find one more image so that will be the uh, composition of f and g so this is uh, here only uh, the, the composition will be possible only if one co domain is acting as a domain for the uh, the next function then only the composition is possible otherwise it is not possible am next question is ah, yes. from bhavadarini raj uh, yeah. so she wants you to explain the graph of differential calculus Ma'am, uh, one moment, ma'am. Uh, ah, yes, ma uh, yes, before that, uh, this mm. uh, function of a function, you can uh, do it with an example. Uh, uh, yeah. Then it would be better, like a relay or something. You can give an explanation. Ah, uh, hmm? uh, relay, ma'am. Okay. Uh, 
Hello. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am. Any other example you can think of, uh, and then, or uh, afterwards also, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we will go to the next question. I will think about. So what is that? Um, explain the graph of differential calculus from Bhavadarini Raj. Okay. See this uh, uh, actually this is the graph of uh, uh, differential calculus that is differentiation or derivative. See a point x is there and the very nearing point is x plus delta x. So delta x is a small chain. Uh, so x and x plus delta x. So this distance is nothing but delta x. So now what we are trying to find here is the slope of this function between these two points, that is x comma y and x plus delta x comma f of x plus delta x. Actually, y is nothing but f of x. So x comma f of x to x plus delta x comma f of x plus delta x. So now, uh, these two, uh, the point, the difference between these two points first we are taking. So what we are finding out is, so we are finding out the, uh, the distance from x, y to x plus delta x comma f of x plus delta x. Then you divide by the small increment. So the small increment means you will get only one point that is the slope. So that is the slope of the function. Okay. So uh, this is the infinitesimal small increment delta x and delta y. So uh, f of x plus delta uh, difference between f of x plus delta x and f of x. That is this uh, abscissa and this abscissa. So the difference, this curve, so the difference between this you find and then divide by the, uh, the small change in delta x. So that will give you the slope. So that actually will give you the inclination of this curve to the x-axis. So the inclination of this curve, or that is uh, nothing but uh, tan theta. So the tan, uh, tangent, so it is nothing but the tangent of the curve. Okay. Um, uh, Babadani Raj, is it clear? Yes. Okay. Uh, then Hello? the next question ah. is from Chidambaram. Um, he is asking ah, yeah. the question like, uh, when solving limits problem, what yeah. about the indeterminate forms, sir? Indeterminate like zero by forms. zero? Ah, yeah, actually I am uh, here. I have not uh, gone to the entire set of limits. Uh, I whatever the whatever we want for the derivative, I have uh, uh, explained here. But uh, to solve limits problems, there are many ways. That is Leibniz rule. 0 by 0 form means you have to uh, use Leibniz rule and all. That is differentiate the numerator and differentiate the denominator and then you substitute the limit. Okay. And uh, it also uh, for the infinite by infinite form because 0 by 0 form is indeterminate. We cannot uh, give answers for them. Okay. So that is, there are many methods to solve limit problems. Uh, so if I if I am going to take those limits and I have to start uh, many things and uh, these two days will not be enough because my our focus is only on differential calculus. Okay, I think I am clear. Chidambaram. Then 
the number is it okay two of them write their answer ma'am suyatha ma'am two of them uh, want to question ma'am uh, but i did uh, who are can you can you just type your question in chat box one by one you you can keep typing your questions in chat box students you have any further questions is there any further questions students anybody have any more clarification question any doubts they have uh, you can get it clarified now i have also sent you the attendance link uh, for today's day one attendance link please fill up the google form for every day i'll be posting an attendance link so please uh, fill it up and uh, send it across mam and uh, we can share the, the today's uh, uh, problems uh, like uh, uh. homework uh, ah, or yes, okay. hmm? ah, yes we will uh, share it with the students ah, yes ma'am ah, yes yeah 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 yes ma'am yes ma'am actually uh, tomorrow by tomorrow i will be setting the uh, we will be setting the mail for those answers ma'am today's question as well as tomorrow's question also. so uh, today ah uh, other than this uh, ah. like whatever we have projected on screen yeah. we will send them the assignment questions over ah. uh, mail ma'am so ah yes ma uh, which we can explain sure. the Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Ma yes. Ma yes. Uh, uh, no, actually, ma'am, I am planning to send the the questions along with the answers also, ma'am. So I am going. I want to give one one day time. Actually, today I have given only four questions, but tomorrow there will be many questions, ma'am. Uh, so I thought of sending them the solutions through mail tomorrow, including uh, one more question, question from uh, Chidambaram, ah, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so he is asking like whether uh, differentiation for functions. Uh, Yeah. will be taught tomorrow yes of course actually like tomorrow is the power x yeah 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 everything actually how log x the derivative of log x is one by x everything i am going to show the proof so tomorrow will be a full elaborate session on differential differentiation only uh, so today i just wanted to stop with the the, the prerequisites because the functions and limits are very much essential to understand differential calculus so really tomorrow we will be elaborating everything all the rules product rules everything we will elaborate and how it has come also we will see um, participants yeah. i have just got 21 responses so kindly fill up the attendance form uh, which has been sent to you in the chat box that link up for today's attendance yeah hari kannan is asking one more question hari kannan are you there Hari Kannan. Hari Kannan. He is asked, without limits, can calculus be able to perform or not? So, without limits, we cannot uh, because uh, actually only if the limit exists, a function will be. We know that whether the function is continuous or not. So, then only any continuous function only will be differentiated. So, without limits, we cannot go to. Derivative. So, we'll find derivative. Any other questions, participants? Ma'am, uh, uh, by going through the response, yes, I uh, the students said that it is a very excellent session for them, oh. and uh, one of the persons wanted uh, uh, an explanation in Tamil whenever possible. Oh, okay. 
Ma'am, is it ma'am? Principal, ma'am, is it allowed, ma'am? Can we? Principal, ma'am. Okay. Okay, we can explain. Who wants it in Tamil, ma'am? A uh, one participant wants it in Tamil, ma'am. Wherever possible. Who uh, who is it? Ma one second, ma'am. One second. I'll just one moment. You just take it out and find it. It's in chat box, ma'am. What he has uh, given? No, no, ma'am. I got it from the attendance sheet. I was getting a feedback from them, like oh. uh, so. Uh, one of the participants, sir. Like we have asked them whether uh, they want the doubts clarified in Tamil also. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. They want some explanation to be. Uh, he, uh, they have written this exactly. Tamil explain, explain, uh, explanation. Could that, for example, inna nalla puriyam. That means we will, they will ask, ma'am. That's what they have asked. Mm -hmm. If we explain better in Tamil, uh, they will understand better. It seems, ma'am. So, Sudha, friend, you can send the questions uh, by today itself. Okay. Thank you, Chidamba. Any other questions, participants? And uh, today we are planning to share you questions. Uh, whatever topic covered today, on that we will be posting yeah. the questions through your mail. You get the answers ready, and tomorrow we will display the answers. Yeah. A uh, participants, you can send the answers through mail actually. So we will be sharing to uh, the questions through a particular mail ID. So you can reply with your answers to that particular mail ID. Sudhakaran, I hope it is clear. So I feel. Uh... This was a very informative session, and I do find that uh, most of the participants are uh, eagerly listening and understanding uh, mathematics. So uh, this is a fundamental thing that what we've got on differentiation today. Tomorrow we will be elaborating on the differential calculus, entire differential calculus, how to deal with them, and many more problems to come. So everybody is looking forward to that, ma'am. Thank you for a wonderful yes, session, ma'am. Thank, thank you, audience, and uh, it was very uh, like uh, interactive session. That also uh, yes, ma'am. It was interesting, and I thank you also, ma'am, uh, for giving such a wonderful example. Uh, thank you, students. Actually, I am looking forward the same kind of participation tomorrow also. Uh, so please be on time tomorrow. Uh, because it is a very elaborative session tomorrow uh, we will have a solid one and a half hours uh, we have to go deep into differential uh, calculus uh, so please uh, study the limits from your books limits and continuous concept of these two things because uh, it only is very very important to understand differential calculus okay this is um, a platform yeah. participants once again i'm just rep repeating tomorrow also it is the same meeting id you have to uh, join for the meeting 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock that is the timings and at the end of tomorrow's session we will have an assessment which i'll be say, sharing the link to you and uh, after you fill up the assessments you we, you will be only those who fill up the assessments will be eligible for an e certificate because many of you are posting your doubts for regarding certificates definitely there is a certificate for uh, every webinar series so this is for differential calculus. You'll be getting a certificate after you complete your assignment uh, assessments tomorrow. And uh, one more thing, this is a bridge course series. So if you're undergoing the NTA series, that is a five weekend series of mathematics, then you'll be getting uh, one more certificate for undergoing all the courses in the series. I think we can wind up for the yes, day. Uh, yes, 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 y